Welcome everyone to part two of the weekly Q and A. Hope you guys enjoyed part one. Your questions weren't too bad. Hopefully my answers didn't suck too bad. And my eyes already twitching and the damn video is just beginning. So it's only going to get worse from here. Uh, so let's get started. That's so Laurel. Why aren't people mad that Daniel Bryan is in this intercontinental title match? Uh, because they can't admit that something involving Daniel Bryan might be stupid or fucking sucks. Because otherwise they should be outraged. They should be fucking pissed. Not so much just the fact that he's in this icy title ladder match at WrestleMania, but the fact that he's a bit player, he's an afterthought in all of this. The guy who main evented the biggest show of the year last year didn't even have anything actually planned for him. He's thrown into this as an afterthought, as a second fiddle for the IC title. And again, I know people are getting captivated about the thought of him and Ziggler in the ring at the same fucking time with guys like Ambrose and so on and so forth. And like, oh my god, this is fucking great, this is fucking awesome. He's going to have incredible spots and bumps and flips and kicks and... <laughs> no, it's fucking stupid. And people, they're going to be pissed about something, but you'd be pissed about that. Danny Bryan didn't have the main event, but by God, he probably deserves some type of featured WrestleMania match. Yeah, I'm just saying. Jesus. Let's see here. Dennis Sidron. Do you prefer 90s or 2000s HBK? Now, what are your thoughts on the year 2002 in the WWE? Uh, you know, I thought 2002 was a pretty good year. Frankly, liked it a lot better than 2001. Um, although as the year went along, I started to like Raw less and less, and I became much more of a SmackDown guy at that time, that's for sure. Uh, in terms of your other question, 90s or 2000s HBK? I was a huge HBK guy. The one guy I really got into him was uh, in 2002, actually, when he came back, because I thought it was a good story, and they told a good story with him at that time. So, you know, SummerSlam to Survivor Series of 2002, I was very much on the HBK bandwagon. Um, you know. Other than that, eh, I take it fast. Other than, you know, what he did in the he was incredible in the ring. Michael Corvin, if WWE were to ever have a Bray Wyatt Mick Foley match feud, would that be a good or bad idea? Uh, now, probably a bad idea because could Foley even wrestle? I don't know how much it would work. But man, if you had mankind in his peak taking on Bray Wyatt in his fucking peak, that thing would be incredible. Incredible. The matches would be brutal and the promos would be god awesome. All right. And let's see here. Richie James. Could it be argued that Colin Cassidy is a five-tool player for the WWE that could be a top guy once he moves up to the main roster? Um, I mean, you look at Colin Cassidy, and he has something that you can't buy, you can't teach, and that's size, height in particular. I mean, what is he, close to seven foot? I mean, he's got that. He's got that going for him. There's parts to him. I look at him, and I say, you know, this guy could make some money someday. This guy could be a future opponent for a Roman Reigns, a... Bray Wyatt, which is what you should be envisioning, guys, when you bring them in. You know, who are they going to work with down the road? How can you make money with these guys? With that said, I look at him and I say to myself, he has his own little flair and he has his own ability to connect with the audience, but God damn, if he had a little bit more of, let's say, Enzo Amore's personality, what could he be? Um, I also look at Colin Cassidy and I say, yeah, he's seven foot-ish, uh, but his body's kind of odd-shaped. Is like he needs to hit the gym harder and especially work on his pecs. You know, it might sound kind of superficial to say, but I'm serious. I mean, you got to look at that. Uh, your body in that business is a way to make money, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's not working out hard enough, or not working out in the right way, or not having the right type of nutrition, or the right type of supplements, whatever the case might be. Colin Cassidy, you know, to me, could use some work on his upper body. And that would really, really help him once he got up to the main roster because it just looks kind of odd at times, actually. I think he's got a guy that's got something. I think he's a guy that could do something. Um, that's for sure. Let's see here. Beam it to Cashman. What is your favorite Friday the 13th movie? I'll always go back to the first one. I always think that's the best one in my mind. Mitch Sutherland, could any one thing possibly happen to get you excited for WrestleMania in the rest of the road to WrestleMania? If so, what would that be? Um, no. I really don't think there's anything else that could get me excited at this point in time for WrestleMania. It just is what it is. 
And that's the truth. I just don't see how anything else could get me excited for Mania. Peter Gunn, if Bray Wyatt and Undertaker had won their respective WrestleMania matches last year, would their match this year be the main event? No, probably not, but it would be the one I'd be most looking forward to and the most excited about. That's for sure. And probably would have been the match I'd have been most excited about and looking forward to the most last year when it should have fucking happened. Paul Timas, would next year be the year to take a halfback earlier in the middle of the first round of guys like James Conner and Ezekiel Elliott are available? Um, <clears throat> are you referencing a specific team or just in general? I mean, those will be two of the top guys right now uh, for next year's draft. We'll have to see how it all plays out long term. We haven't gotten to 2015 yet. I'm not thinking too much about 2016's draft. Let's just leave it at that. Bruce Walter Brown the Third. Where would wrestling be like if they had internet dirt sheets back in the 80s or earlier? Um, be fucking horrible. I mean, there's no question about it. You'd add those uh, members of the audience that would have always been trying to boo Hogan. Um, they would have always tried to been booing somebody like the Ultimate Warrior. They'd have been pushing for a guy like Mr. Perfect to be at the top. Oh my god, he's got the best work right in the ring. Oh my god, how could the WWE not see that he's not some roided up freak and as a result, he needs to be at the top because he's the best wrestler in the WWE. Oh, of course, why can you not see that? They'd be pushing for 1987 Bret Hart to get a rocket ship straight up his ass several years too damn early. Uh, they'd have been pushing for Dynamite Kid to hold the strap in 86. I mean, there'd been a lot of dumb shit that fans would have pushed for back then if there were the internet and jerk sheets around. Just saying, it's true. We fucking know it is. Kenny Ward, do you think the WWE should have held off Daniel Bryan's return until the Raw after WrestleMania? If this is what they were going to fucking do, then yes. If this is what you were going to do, then yes. Lindsey Hopkins, can Raw possibly get any worse? I'm making myself watch it these days. Well, a lot of us are making ourselves watch it with the hope that it'll get better or for other reasons. For me, it's just mainly because I do this channel. It's the only fucking reason I watch anymore. Uh, and yes, it can possibly get worse. Uh, let's see here. Lindsey Hopkins also wants to know, do you think the current version of the title is the best one? Which one, the world title? Eh, I don't know about all that. I won't go that far. Son Goshiwaku. While I know you hated WWF in 2001, did you enjoy all of the Rock and Y2J promos cut on Stephanie in the summer fall of that year? Um, <clears throat> to a degree, yes, except for the fact that she was the one that was representing ECW, of all people, Stephanie McMahon, is one of the figureheads of the fucking alliance, and... You know, it was always being done in a way to bury WCW and ECW, so fuck it. Yeah, it was funny in a way, but fuck it still. Uh, Ever Harding, which time period in Kane's career was worse? The whole eight years where he was unmasked or the recent corporate Kane gimmick? Oh, corporate Kane, by God, was worse. Stephen Bonite, who is the TNA equivalent of the Breakfast Club? I don't really like TNA, I just wanted to know. Fucking doesn't, I don't know, doesn't matter. There might have been a breakfast club at some point in time, but guys don't stay there long enough to have there be a breakfast club. <laughs> Jared Anthony Simmons, is Ric Flair out there somewhere bleeding? Uh, probably because another one of his ex-wives is beating the shit out of him because he didn't pay his uh, alimony or child support. <laughs> He's probably running from the repo, man, as we speak. Brandon Leslie, how would a Sting versus Taker feud work with both men being part-time wrestlers and hardly around to cut any promos? How would there be any build-up to the match between them? It's fucking Sting, it's fucking Undertaker. It's 15, 20 years of waiting for this shit. You really wouldn't have to do a whole lot, I assure you. You really wouldn't have to do a whole lot. You really, really wouldn't. Antoine Dupree, today is my 21st birthday. What did you do on your 21st birthday? Oh, God. What did I do? 21st birthday. I drove a friend three hours on the highway uh, because his mom was having some health troubles at the time and he needed a ride. So I drove three hours there, three hours back. That was that was my 21st birthday, yeah. That is, yeah, you're absolutely right, Jeff. That is what it is. 
Oh, nice guy, huh? <laughs> Drew Frodo Ebert. Which taker match at Mania pre-streak being broke would you rather see and how would you book it? I ain't answering the how you book it shit. That shit takes too long. Sting versus Taker, Cena versus Taker, The Rock versus Taker. I'll throw a Rock Taker out. I didn't need to see that. One of the two I did need to see was Sting versus Taker or Cena versus Taker. And frankly, because of all the different things that it encompasses, the match I would want to see the most is Cena versus Taker. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Because I tell you what. <clears throat> You might not believe that Rock would end the streak. You probably wouldn't believe that Sting would end the streak, but it would still have the elements of being that fantasy dream matchup. You'd be petrified about John Cena ending the streak. You want to talk about getting people emotionally invested. You want to talk about people not knowing what's going to happen and really believing that Taker is finally going to lose. Throw him up against John Cena at WrestleMania and see what the fuck happens. And I've always found that interesting. With all the different people Taker's wrestled over the years, the one year... Person he never did at WrestleMania, or one of them was John Cena. I always wonder if that's a bit of a statement by Taker towards John Cena. If there's always a lingering resentment and a hatred there, you know, professional jealousy. Taker saying you didn't deserve it. Of course, he signed off on fucking giving it to Brock. So what the fuck does he know? Connor Campbell, what's your all-time favorite I Quit match? Mine is CM Punk versus Triple H, Vince McMahon. Um. Favorite I Quit match would be Rock and Foley. Irvin Griffin Jr., if you were to wrestle Naomi, what would your finisher be? It would probably be a face mountain into a double inverted baby making splashdown. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably be a whole finishing move. It would be a motorboat into a face mountain into... A vanilla injector. <laughs> be bam, babies, right in that bitch's baby patch. <laughs> and we got anything else I want to fucking less uh, fucking talk about. Taron T. Rooks. If Phil Brooks and Brock Lesnar was to legit fight in the octagon, who do you think would win and how long would the fight last? Brock Lesnar in less than a minute. Fucking child, please. See him punk will get his shit pushed. Today. Brock Lesnar would annihilate his fucking ass. Annihilate his fucking ass. I'm going to emphasize this again. Brock Lesnar would annihilate his fucking ass. Let's see, Jason Devereaux. Who would be the top three people on your most requested future endeavored list? Kevin Dunn is on the top of my list, and thanks for answering my question last week. Sure. Um, Kevin Dunn, Michael P.S. Hayes, and then Vince McMahon. And you can put them in any order. You can really put them in any order. Any other questions I want to answer? Yeah, I think I've answered enough of them. All right, so thanks you guys again for submitting your questions. Sorry, this is kind of a half-hazard, half-assed uh, Q&A uh, two-parter because, you know, frankly, the questions were okay, but nothing great. My energy level for this was okay, definitely not great. Uh, and I think we can mostly all agree that our interest level right now, especially in the WWE heading into the biggest show of the year, uh, is not all that great. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to know why? Because WrestleMania 31 is not going to be all that great. <laughs>